Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fur and Fam YouTube channel, where our goal is to give you the skills and the confidence you need to build your home on wheels. I'm Carver, and today we're going to go through the last episode of our electrical safety series. If you're like us, you really want your van to be safe. You want to be able to go to bed at night and know that you're going to wake up and not find your van a charred pile of rubble in the morning. So. That's what we're trying to avoid, and let's jump into it. So this video is focusing all about the components that you use and worrying and wondering and making sure that they're not overloaded. So one of the easiest things to do is to understand how electrical components are rated. So in the case of an inverter, there typically are two ratings that a company will give it. That's the maximum output that the inverter can output and the maximum continuous output. So the one that marketing is going to run with and put all over the internet is going to be the maximum. So if you see a 3000 watt inverter, almost 100% of the time, that's going to mean it can handle a spike up to 3000 watts. Now what that doesn't mean is that you can pull 3000 watts from it all day long, every day, 365 days a week, all year long. Um, so what you need to look at is the continuous rating. And the continuous rating will tell you what that inverter can handle day in and day out running all the stuff in your van. And that's what you really need to pay attention to. So like in the case of our inverter, it's rated for a 3000 watt maximum and a 2400 watt continuous. So there's not a, not a huge difference there between the, the two uh, ratings, but it's enough to, to take note of. So we know that if we're gonna run our AC unit, we also cannot run our hot water heater at the same time because the two of those it would overload our inverter inverter and shut it down. It could potentially create an unsafe situation too if some of the fail safes in the inverter didn't uh, control what was supposed to be controlled and it could lead to um, a fire if you're if you're not careful. So that's that's one of the main things to, to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind, and we touched about this a little bit in the last video in this series where we talked about fuses and circuit breakers, is that you need to size your fuse and circuit breaker according to what the units are rated for. So even if you miscalculate and you're slightly off in your uh, setup, you could still save yourself if you choose the right fuse. So you need to look at the what the manufacturer of your components recommends for fuse size. And that's that's just as important as making sure that you've spec'd out the component correctly. Another thing to keep in mind too is that the quality of components you use. So there's components that are out there that you might find them in cheaper places, uh, maybe Walmart, I'm sure Amazon's got a ton of them, so you might want to watch out. Uh, you can find inverters that are really, really cheap, and more than likely, they're not meant to run your uh, all your systems in your van every day. They're meant to plug into a cigarette lighter and charge a laptop every other, every other time you use the, the vehicle, maybe. So, personally, we wouldn't recommend relying on a component like that in your van every day. Now I'm sure there's plenty of people that do and you might get away with it and you might be fine but you might run into a situation where that component only lasts a couple weeks because it's not not made to stand up to everyday use or you could run into a situation where two weeks in you start to smell something funny every time you run and you're like mm, I don't know if that's right and it, it could be melting down components could be starting fires uh, could be leaving you high and dry without any electrical power in your van and that's definitely not what you want you want to be out and enjoying and seeing the world and traveling in your van not worrying oh man is my electrical system gonna gonna get me through the night and keep my heat running you know so those are some main things to keep in mind on overloading components picking out components so avoid those mistakes keep your van safe and this wraps up our four-part electrical series on mistakes that you should avoid in your van. Now, if you want to check out our electrical system in our van, we're running a Tesla battery module. We've got a couple videos on that and we'll roll those here at the end. 